So welcome back to another one take where we're looking at the Stalingrad today. Trying to go through some of these tier 10 premium ships, starting with steel. Uh, these are very expensive ships to get and can be very difficult to know which one to go for. Of course, we looked at Borgon last time, and I think Stalingrad and Borgon really are those first two options most people tend to go for. So personally, I would prefer Borgon. I find it a little more interesting to play. Uh, but Stalingrad is still very good. You see we have the 12km radar here. I find it dies a little too quick these days, though. It can be decent, um, but along with Siegfried, these battle cruisers really do feel a lot worse now that they don't have their fire prevention. Fire prevention being one of, if not the best skills for tanking. But that said, we can still do reasonably well if we position ourselves well. We are, fortunately for us, not facing off against a carrier, which does allow us to play bow in here. I don't always like playing bow in, um, especially against carriers. I find it's a great way to lose a lot of HP, like a lot, a lot of HP. But in this case, we can play a little bow in, getting our radar on most of B and all of A. And then I really love taking positions like this where People are often patrolling like this, sending their ships this way to go fight on the flank. And we're going to catch broadsides. That's really, really what I like to do a lot of the time here. Uh, we're looking at torps on the flank here, which is a little spooky. Enemy Annapolis over here. That's fine. If we are at closer ranges, it's a little dangerous to shoot all of our guns. Um, that is broadside enough that you're going to get citadeled. However, at longer ranges, I'm a little more okay with it. There we can see some of the punching power of these guns. That is the reason you're getting this ship after all. The really, really nice gun power. And we're definitely more focused on the AP. Notice we're getting spotted here, so it looks like somebody is over there. Uh, unfortunate. Means we're going to get a little focused here, but that's okay. Um, the armor should help us survive a lot of this. Freddy is broadside at the moment, so we'll go after him. And I'm running propulsion mod, and you're going to see that that helps us to dodge some incoming fire. And uh, the armor should help us, although the Freddy just did 15, 16,000 damage to us there, somehow. <laughs> Freddy, of course, well known for its incredible accuracy, right? There we go. Shikishima did a lot less to us. Very nice. Maybe late thinking about that egg here, maybe? Um, we are definitely benefiting from that uh, smoke that the gearing put down earlier. Uh, but you'll notice the dispersion actually not looking very good. Stalingrad's supposed to have very good dispersion. Uh, Brisbane, where are you going? Turning this way. There we go. Well, we got one, which is not amazing. It's okay, but it's certainly decent damage, I guess, into him. Go for the Freddy again. Surprised how far up that egg has managed to push over in the uh, sea cap here. But we've done decent damage so far, and this is really what I'm looking to do in the Stalingrad most of the time is just finding ways to punish the enemy team and not overcommit. That's one of the difficult things to do sometimes in these Russian uh, battle cruisers or big cruisers. Overcommitting can be very common. Fortunately, we're getting spotted from out there. This thing's a little awkward. Kind of makes me want to angle to that a little bit more. I could turret out, decent damage. I'm actually going to swap to the HE, which I don't always do, um, but I'm going to swap to the HE here, and we're still spotted. So this isn't always going to work, but we're going to try a radar here. Hmm, it actually does not catch the DD, so we must be right on the edge, which is smart by him, playing outside of radar range, that's what you do. That's how you, this is how you counter radars, by the way. Oh, we briefly got undetected. Very interesting. Uh, that's how you counter radars, is you just stay spotting them, 
Most radar cruisers uh, can be spotted this way without being within their radar. And uh, you notice how the enemy team is definitely looking to take us out. I don't blame them. Uh, that's the best way to deal with a radar ship. But our team is... Uh, well, we're triple capping them at the moment, which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> Means we're likely getting into a blowout here. And I don't want to play too aggressive here, but a little more damage would be nice to get. We're looking at this Venezia or maybe the Annapolis coming back. But the Montana could have a good shot into us here on our side. Sap is something you want to worry about. Uh, I don't know. In those Venezia videos we've done recently, we've been just kind of owning some of those, uh, especially Moskva was the big one, but it was kind of funny how, or kind of insane actually, how good Sap was against uh, these Russian ships. Oh, unfortunate. I'm trying to use the minimap to aim here. Now in, again, just getting smashed. I'll rep the turret because I do want that. What are you thinking, brother? You know I'm a Stalingrad, right? Oh, come on. Come on, he's far outside. Oh my goodness, game, really? Okay. It's still... It's not cruiser dispersion. It is battle cruiser dispersion. So that is worse overall. Definitely worse overall. Gotta be pushing though, right? But we've did we've taken some damage, but that's okay. I do think propulsion mod is very nice here. I'm gonna swap over to the HE. You notice I do have expert loader here. And uh, maybe we'll hit a radar here really quick. Just to see what's up. There we go. We found him, finally. Overlet him? Oh, it turned out, and poor dispersion. But that will deter the Yukimo a little bit. Notice he... This mod here allows us to see. He's got 10 kilometer torps right now. I assume that's accurate. Um, so that does make it difficult for him to torp us. Although his spotting of us has been uh, pretty good for doing damage to us. But uh, it does get him to turn around a little bit. And we're about to win the game. 100k is not amazing for this ship. It could be better. But not too bad. A bit of a game where the enemy team kind of just sat and spawned. I guess I can't really blame them too hard on this flank. Considering how uh, our, our crossfire was pretty good. Like, we did do some pretty solid damage early on. Well, let's do uh, let's do something dumb. Let's see how long we can survive if we just push out here. Steel <laughs> just came back. Oh, not very long. <laughs> Unfortunate. It's all right. Apples is here. Nice. Aim up into his superstructure a bit. He used his burst. Interesting. And he whiffed everything. Alrighty. Ooh, that's good for us. The ship is on fire. Now we'll turn over to the Brisbane. See that 40 second fires. Fortunate, can't quite hit that. Ooh, we do die. Good single launch torps. Oh well. It doesn't uh, push very well alone, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but there we go. That's uh, that's our first game. I had to try and make something happen here. But tier 10 can be like this. And you'll notice I was running reload here. Reload is pretty good on the Stalingrad. But there are op certain games where range can be the better pick. But that's it for the first game. Um, <laughs> nothing too special there, uh, but let's take a look at the commander and build that I like to run here. And you might be surprised a little bit by some of it, 
Um, but here for the modules and upgrades here to start with. Range, range can be very valuable in the uh, sniping, like I said. Especially when you get carriers in the game, people tend to stay a little further back. And people like to focus on Stalingrad. For good reason. It's a good ship, the radar is very powerful. Sometimes you're forced to play pretty far back, and the lack of range, surprisingly, can be an issue at tier 10 sometimes. Um, but accuracy, of course, is what we want. And then the commander. I am actually running AA upgrades. That's how much I find carriers lock this ship out. And with these two upgrades and the defensive fire, you can guarantee, pretty much guarantee you're not getting a second drop, which is really pretty nice. Um, they'll typically get part or all of their first drop off on you, uh, which can be pretty painful, especially those AP bombs really, really hurt. Uh, Stalingrad is a pretty big target here if we look, and uh, it just goes pretty much right into this Citadel. Very easy to hit for those AP bombs, so pretty scary thing. Uh, but for making the ship a little easier to play in some of these tier 10 games, there are times where I just swap over to range. So I'll do that now. Um, I want to show you a bit of a variety. I did definitely play that radar island kind of role. It can do pretty well there, even with our... Let's not uh, collect containers during a video. I'll do that later on stream. Um, <laughs> kind of going into autopilot mode here. But yeah, that, that radar island roll can work pretty well. You just have to find a position like we did there where we can actually shoot over the island. A lot of islands in the game that work very well for ships like Des Moines and Worcester, which have pretty poor shell arcs. Which is actually a positive in that case because you can actually shoot over a lot of islands. Where Stalingrad, Moskva... Nevsky, they can't. Um, you have to find islands that give you cover that also let you fire over. Otherwise, you're not really all that useful. Really only in super competitive things like Kings of the Sea or whatever that that radar bot on an island can be very useful, um, even if they aren't able to use their guns. Okay, and we get very lucky here. Uh, I don't know... I don't know how we got so blessed with Matchmaker, but I'll take it. Uh, no carrier, no sub to deal with in a Stalin? That feels great. Uh, and we did take range in this one. So the thought is either we play in here somewhere on this island and we try and get cross shots up here and out here, or we go south and then we uh, use our range to just pummel everything up here. And... Normally, I would probably say playing here is better um, to get all those cross shots. It's really, really powerful. I don't really want to give up the south too hard. Uh, this this position is vulnerable if the enemy team is allowed to push around. And uh, if you spawn on a flank and you go to a quote-unquote good position like that and you spawn all the way on the flank here and go like there, pretty much every time your teammates are going to see that and think, oh, I'm getting no support over here. I'm going to leave too. And then you just give up a whole side of the map. And that is very, very, very bad. Um, so that's where, sure, I'd love to play here, but I'm not going to. I would much rather do maybe even some open water things in a kiting role. We can, we can play there pretty well and uh, maybe even get to this island and use that. Stalling, of course, can play that open water role pretty well. Especially with prop mod. You have to be careful though, showing this much broadside. Um, but I'm just going to start by getting as far as I can. And then uh, turning out and then angling is kind of going to be the the idea here. Vampire Yamagiri um, in a div. So we should be pretty good here when it comes to winning this flank. Azuma? Orky, sure. We'll shoot the Zorky. That is fine by me. So what that's doing is it's allowing our DDs to get a much, much closer position. And then uh, Monty shoots us. Hopefully we're angled enough for it. If not, we're turning out, so his shells should go low. Propulsion mod, also saving the day here a little bit. Really waiting for that Azuma to uh, turn out a little bit more. But I'd like to see. Fortunate. Can kind of ignore the Zorky a little bit here. I really want to finish off this Azuma. But you're very good against some of these um, quick DDs, gunboat DDs. But yeah, this Azuma should, Azuma should go down. Probably eating Torps here. 
but I'm going to hold my shot. It's a little bit like battleships where... Okay, he's definitely eating dwarves. <laughs> uh, it can be like battleships where you want to hold on to your shot at times. Let's uh, shoot at this Zorky again. Maybe help out a little bit. Risky turn here coming up. Um, but the Monty's also kind of bow in. And he did underlead us last time. We're pretty far away. 21 kilometers pretty far away. So we have a pretty good hold on C at the moment. So what that means is uh, we led better this time. So we'll just slow down and turn in. And then that should allow us to uh, dodge these shells. Yep. Seems fine. Try and shoot back at him a little bit. Shimakaze here as well. well hopefully our DDs don't uh, eat a bunch of torps. That'd be sad. 8k is all right there. We do want to be helping on these DDs. We can. Monty turning out. Can't remember. Do I have Do I have the pen? Please don't eat torps, guys. We're going to need to go help our guys in the north here very soon. Vampire 8-1. Too bad. Too bad. That's all right, though. Just need to make sure we're helping when we have the opportunity on the uh, DDs. Monty's angling, so let's use some G. Give it a go. Don't always want to be pushing flanks like this, but I will do it from time to time. Don't want to necessarily push enemy spawn in that. Got some HE, so we'll go after the Zorky again. All right, damage. We do get a fire, which is pretty nice. Leafin's kind of turning around. That's all right. So I guess we'll just kind of hang out here for our, for now, at least. Probably turns out I led a little bit for that, but not for the slowdown. Alrighty. Even with Stalin, it can be uh, difficult <laughs> to hit some of these DDs, huh? So now that we're in this island chain, um, you know, we're getting reasonably safe from torpedoes, which feels kind of nice. But, uh, oh, there's a curve first here, too? Oh, propulsion mod, save me. <laughs> Lucky, lucky. Could have been paying attention to that. Alright, now that the Zorky is pretty far away, I don't really want to be going after him. A little too difficult to uh, hit that. Yeah, see, our, our team in the north seems like they've committed pretty hard. So we're going to lose a Conqueror. Looks like we're losing an Ibuki. Uh, the Schlieffen is definitely getting in. So this is not looking so good. And our guys are pushing mid. Not... That's a really bad push. Because they're just caught in a crossfire. Hmm. Would have been much... If these guys had gone... Well, the Schlieffen especially had gone back this way and focused on the enemy Schlieffen. That might have been a little better. first a little bit. Not sure why our price end is pushing in, by the way. So... Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can help win this game. And I think I actually need to get ready to run here. <laughs> as sad as that sounds. Because um, our price end is going to go down soon. And then it's only me here and these guys are going to turn back in on us. Yeah, so our Schlieffen does go down mid... We did lose the Conqueror. We did lose the Ibuki. Get the Kerr first back, though, which is kind of nice. We'll try there. Yeah, I'm going to angle back, and then I'm going to try and come back this way, maybe help on the as the enemy team pushes there. As much as I think they'll push, I'm not sure about it. Their armor working very nicely for us. Done 70k so far, but not a lot of impact, like high impact kind of damage, fortunately. 
might be just in a scenario where we've lost too many ships, I think. We'll see, though. There's always opportunities to throw. And we want to be there to help on our team. Help our team if they if the enemy team does. Yeah, pushing, you know, pushing through this is just very, very hard on this map. Go after the Monty. Then we'll try and meet up with the Ohio or something like that. 10k there is nice. Just slow down and turn out here. I don't want to get in the way of the Preussen. Poor guy's trying to stay alive. <laughs> Ideally, we also would stay within radar of the cap. Just so that the enemy team isn't going to get C here for free. Our DDs are doing some work mid. That's nice. Uh, three shatters. Too bad. Yeah, we'll just wait. I don't want to give up this cap. I can help it. Six thousand HP. Tough. Yeah, there he goes. Because if the Shima just back caps us, that's gonna that's not gonna go well for us. However, we're not spotted right now. What does that mean? Does that mean a Shima's here? Or did he run away? He's got full health, so he should be I don't know, maybe aggressive? Either way, let's uh move on from here. I mean, Des Moines hopefully goes down. Oh, our Ohio pushed into the crossfire now, too. See, if, if our teammates that had gone through here, like the Ohio went through this gap, the, oh, Shima did leave. Um, Schlieffen went through this gap. If they had instead come back here and reinforced this flank from this side, they wouldn't have been caught in a crossfire, and they would have uh, not lost so much HP or even just uh, outright been killed. It's really why I talk a lot about... We don't want to push spawn. We don't want to put it put ourselves into crossfires. It seems maybe to uh, to me it feels very basic and repetitive. I feel like I'm always saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, maybe maybe you guys can let me know if you feel the same way. But it happens. It happens so often, um, and there's really not. It's hard. It's hard to win games or be effective when your teammates kind of throw like that. Shima mid here. And get some damage in. Although he is... Okay. Bit of damage. I'll take it. BK on 8k. Try and take that out, I guess. Still on the HE for now. We'll swap to AP, though. There goes the Ohio. Yeah. Bit of a... Uh, less of a blowout, but kind of a blowout. It feels more like a blowout to me, just because... Uh, I feel like I could call everything that went wrong in this game before it happened. Uh, so then it kind of just feels bad when you just see that all come come to uh, come to pass. Uh, but uh, decent damage into the crunch down here. Or going on our flank is pretty tough to deal with. We have to dodge that somehow. Hopefully with our propulsion. I didn't really mention it, but uh, Stalingrad does have some improved pen angles, which is pretty nice. Looks like he read the stop. Really well. Pretty good aim. Alright. Well, let's try and turn in and I don't know. Try and make something happen. Can't just leave a boar going on our flank. Monty's on our flank, though, too. This is kind of what the uh, 
guys in the middle pushed into, I think. <laughs> Doesn't go very well. Monty shot. Alrighty. We knew that was happening. So that's what happens when you get caught in a crossfire. There's not really much we can do at the end of the game here. Um, but when you have the choice, probably don't push into a crossfire. Stalingrad especially is pretty weak on the flanks, but that really is the... Um, that's what happens when you push, push middle into crossfires like that. It feels like a blowout to me. Both ways, so... Um, win one, lose one. Not really much control to be had over these games, unfortunately. But there you go. There's Stalingrad. Um, there's a reason I don't recommend this ship. Uh, again, I'm an autopilot. Um, there's a reason I don't recommend this ship these days as much as Borgone. I know Stalingrad can perform well. Um, but I personally don't find these guns that effective. I mean, just... Just look at how we did against the Annapolis and the Brisbane in that previous game. We got a Citadel or two each, but they're broadside at less than 12 kilometers. I mean, Stalin, like, given the hype around this ship, you would think it just nukes things. Um, so yeah, and the other thing really comes down to, I feel pushed out of games sometimes in this ship. I feel like, like that, that second game, I feel like it doesn't have the... Um, carry potential as much anymore. I think that really comes down to fire prevention and it's just really not tanking particularly well. I don't know. I just have this general sense that I don't enjoy this ship as much. And maybe that's just my preference. Um, but for me personally, it's not as good as the Borgone. Borgone, I can pretty much always have a good game. Stalingrad, it really, really depends on getting broadsides and not having blowouts. Um, which I guess is fair to say about every ship not getting blowouts. But, uh, I don't know. Just not a big fan of battle cruisers in general in this game these days. They don't feel particularly fun for me to play. They combine too many of the frustrating sides of battleships for me, and not the upsides. And then you also gain some of the frustrations with cruisers as well. So it's hard for me to see that as a positive? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here. It is a one take. I'm kind of rambling now at this point. So we should probably just end the video. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day.